नमस्ते एवरीवन आई एम ज्ञान एंड यू आर वाचिंग द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ सेशन 20 ऑफ जावा एंड वेब मल्टी थ्रेडिंग इन जावा बट बिफोर वी लर्न अबाउट द मल्टी थ्रेडिंग वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोसेसेस इन एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम देयरफॉर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोसेसेस इन एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोसेसेस मैनेज्ड बाय एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम फर्स्ट वन व्हिच इज क्रिएटेड बाय द यूजर एंड यूज्ड बाय द यूजर लाइक ब्राउजर the user uses browser the editor the jvm virtual machine that is also used by you to execute your program the executable files created by the c program these are the examples of few processes created by users of course all the processes are managed by operating system but there are few processes which are created by the users the users of the computer but there are few other processes which are just created by operating system and users have nothing to do about it there are the some processes created by the operating system just to manage the computer there are the some processes created by the operating system just to keep the computer on that means if you just switch on your computer then there are many processes will be started by the operating system and these processes are only for computer management these processes are only for management of cpu for the management of hard disk for the management of memory for the management of networking for the management of security for the management of display and rest of other hardwares in the computer system so users have nothing to do about such processes i do not it such processes as p1 p2 p3 but they have different names i am not going in the details of such processes operating system has to manage all these two types of processes either created for user by the user or either created just to keep the computer switched on operating system have to manage these processes operating system schedule these processes to cpu for execution because you can find dozens of processes running in the computer system but you have only few cores of cpu means you have only few execution units in the cpu like if your cpu has four cores then you have only four execution units if your cpu is of eight cores then you have only eight execution units that's how you have four execution units you have eight execution units but you have dozens of processes running in the computer system that's why the operating system needs to schedule all the processes smartly to the cpu so that all the processes get equal chance to execute on the cpu when you create an executable file by using a c program then you directly create an executable file when you double click on that executable file that executable file becomes a process we will discuss about this in a while but when you talk about the java the class file created because of java program never becomes a process we need to pass the class file to the jvm and jvm executes it jvm is an executable file when you double click on it or when you execute it in your command prompt it becomes a process but a class file created by a java program never becomes a process we know that we execute a class file by passing it to the jvm that's how the jvm becomes a process when we execute it but since the class file never executes by itself that's why the class file never becomes a process when an executable file like p1 is present on the computer as a file then it is in the dormant state means inactive state but if we double click on it or if we execute it by using the command prompt or terminal then the operating system picks this executable file and loads it into the ram means random access memory after loading into the ram the executable file becomes a process after that again the operating system schedule this process to the cpu for its execution how many processes are executing in your system what are those processes can be list by using ps command in linux or using task list command in the windows let's use these commands and see what are the processes running in the computer system first list the processes in the windows machine type here task list task list press enter and these are the processes currently running in the windows machine few processes are executed by the user you can see here the dropbox.exe which is executed by the user few processes are executed by the operating system just to maintain the computer you can check here like this one this is used by the operating system 
just to maintain the computer or in the windows system you can use the task manager to list various processes you go in the processes tab of the task manager and you can see here the listing of various processes few processes are started by the users and few processes are started by the operating system now we are all set to list the processes in linux machine type the command sudo ps minus e press enter type the password and you can see here the list of various processes currently run by the linux operating system i am not going to explain everything about the processes because that is not the part of java and web now one question you may have if there are that many processes executed by the operating system and we have only four cores or eight cores in the cpu to execute all these processes then how the operating system manages to execute such number of processes simultaneously to just four cores or eight cores and this is the question how these all processes are running together on a single cpu and if i am calling here the single cpu then i am talking about the four cores or eight cores of the cpu of course there are dozens of processes but there are only few cores in the cpu when multiple processes are running in an operating system a special program called a scheduler gives chance to every process on the cpu so that an user can use all the processes seamlessly now the question is how an operating system schedule the various processes on the cpu there are various ways by using which an operating system can schedule various processes on the cpu and here we are going to learn just one way to do it suppose that we have only three processes p1 p2 and p3 and we have only one core in one cpu that means we have only one execution unit in the cpu time required to finish the process p1 is 4 time required to finish the process p2 is 6 time required to finish the process p3 is 3 and when a process gets a chance on the cpu it will execute at most two time units on the cpu after that the operating system will remove that process from the cpu and will give it another chance later the process p1 will get a chance to execute on the cpu the total time for execution for the process p1 is 4 and the process p1 can get at most two time unit on the cpu to execute that's why when the process p1 will execute it will execute for two time units and remaining time units for its completion is only two the process p2 will get the next chance the total time length to execute the process p2 is 6 but the process p2 will get only two time units on the cpu and remaining time unit to complete the process p2 is now 4 now it is chance for the process p3 the total time required to complete the process p3 is 3 therefore when we execute the process p3 it can take at most two time unit on the cpu and remaining time to complete the process p3 is 1 after that we need to execute the process p1 the process p1 has only two time unit remaining therefore in this chance the p1 will finish its execution next the process p2 gets a chance to execute on the cpu and it has now only two time units remaining of course the process p1 has completed its execution the process p3 will get the next chance it requires only one time unit for its completion that's why it will execute for only one time unit on the cpu after that the process p3 will be finished then after this is a chance to execute the process p1 but the execution of the process p1 has already finished that's why now it is a time to execute the process p2 the process p2 will execute for two time unit and it will be finished but if you look at all these processes once again then what will happen if we execute them one by one means if you are giving p1 a chance on the cpu then the p1 should be there for four time units if you are giving p2 a chance on the cpu it should be there for six time units if you are giving chance to the process p3 on the cpu it should be there for the three time units this act may arise two problems first one is if you are giving all the cpu time just to process p1 then the process p2 and the process p3 will be hanged because these are not getting a chance to execute on cpu but if you are giving chances to all these processes one by one 
then you are actually giving chances to execute one by one and none of the process will hang. Suppose you have a red color ceiling fan. When you switch on the ceiling fan and the ceiling fan start revolving, then you can see the red color gets distributed in a circle. It seems like that the red color gets distributed in the whole circle. And you think the red color is now available in the whole circle. But where actually the red color is? The red color is just on the wing of your ceiling fan. It's not in the whole circle. But when the fan executes, it seems like that the red color has distributed in the whole circle. Same thing happens when we execute the process one by one on the CPU. It seems like that the CPU is available to all the processes at the same time. Now in the programming, what we can do is, if two parts of our code can execute in parallel, then why do not create two processes to execute these two codes? If you do like that, then our program will able to execute on two cores together. And execution of our program will become much faster. So if you have independent section in your code, why do not divide it into two processes, two different processes and make your program itself much faster. Because in that case, the two processes for the same goal will execute simultaneously, will execute in parallel, which makes your program to finish faster. Therefore, sometimes our Java program has two or more independent sections, which can be executed independently. If we execute this program as a whole in one process, then it will take long to finish. So it will be better if we create more than one process programmatically and give different sections of the code to different processes. That means create two different processes and give one independent section to one process and give another independent section to another process and execute the two processes simultaneously. And that parallel execution will make our code to finish much faster. We already have seen that a program called a scheduler takes the process to the CPU. What I have shown here is one of the many ways to schedule processes to CPU called round robin. The way of scheduling I shown in this video is called round robin. And there are many ways to schedule the process to the CPU. The actual scheduling process in various operating systems is a mixture of various other scheduling algorithms. We cannot predict that which process will get the next chance on the CPU. As a user, you cannot predict that which process is going to be executed by your operating system on the CPU. You cannot predict it as a user. Inside there is an algorithm which is executed by the operating system and all the processes are getting a chance on the CPU. But dividing a process in two or more independent sequence of execution can be useful in any scheduling approach. So we have seen that dividing a long process in various different small processes can improve the overall performance. But dividing a long process into various other small processes can have many limitations. Two processes are two separate tasks on the operating system, which cannot share resources like heap, open file, etc. Means there is a cons of creating more than one processes for your program because each process consumes some resource in the operating system, some resource of the hardware. That's why creating very large number of processes is also a problem. Creating a new process for each new task consume lots of resources. It will be better if various tasks can share various resources. What I want to say here is, can we create two parallel execution sequence without consuming lots of resources? Means I do not want to create separate processes, but I want to create separate execution units without consuming lots of resources, which will be consumed if I create two separate processes. So I do not want to consume lots of resources Therefore, I do not want to create separate processes, but I want to create separate execution sequences. That I can do by use of multi-threading. Of course, we will learn about the multi-threading in the coming videos of this session. Process creation programming is not a part of Java and Wave. From the Java 9 onwards, Java has an excellent API for the process programming. But the process creation programming is not a part of Java and Wave. If you say me to create videos on the process programming, I will create it in separate. That will not be a part of Java and Wave. I can create it. 
But for that, you need to comment down in the comment section of this video. That's all for this video guys. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe my channel on YouTube. Like my page on Facebook. And leave your available comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.